So, so how do you feel about all these billions of people using what you've done? Um, you try not to think about it. I mean, we're, both Steve and I are the sort of people who take things to heart a bit. We both obsess um, more, probably more than we should over the work that we do. I remember when releasing BBC Basic for the BBC machine, I had the code running through my head for weeks and months. Um, I still have bits of the ARM instruction set running through my head. Uh, you can't not think about some of these things. The idea that there are 50 billion uh, things running that is just enough inconceivable that you don't have to worry about it. It's pretty huge and it's... Uh... It, it's got to be a surprise, no? I mean, you were not thinking that was going to happen when you were 1983, you were thinking well, clearly about Well, we, we were thinking it was going to happen because the, the project was MIPS for the masses. We wanted to produce a processor used by everybody. And so we have. Did you think about the... that were going to be portable, like, pocketable stuff in the future? Um, well, the very first job that Herman wanted me to do was to produce an electronic pocket diary for him. That was pre-ACORN, um, so that sort of thing's always on our minds. So we, the, here we have uh, Herman Hauser's signing. This is a this is a model uh, BBC microcomputer. And so, so he wanted you to design. A, what do you say? A portable, a portable electronic diary. So Herman is not the most organised person in the world. So. In, 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 this is back in the 70s he decided that he wanted something an electronic personal organizer you might call it um, to, to run his life uh, electronic pocketbook he, he would call it um, so he found somebody me who was good at low power design or had a reputation for it at least and asked me to design him such a thing and so I set off and designed him that. And when showing him, him the designs I'd done for his work, he saw the other designs that I had in my design portfolio, one of which was a, a home computer. And he asked me if that would work too. And I said, yes, it would. So, so he was the CEO, right? Um, well, uh, 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 of our, the arm spin out? Or when, 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 no, before no. that. Her Herman Hauser was the founder of Acorn Computers, um, largely on the idea that um, he needed something to do after doing a physics PhD. Um, and microelectronics seemed to be an interesting place to go. And so he employed me, Chris Turner, Steve Ferber, to build small pieces of electronics for him. And Eventually, my home computer um, designs became the basis of all the Acorn original machines. So the Acorn System 1 that's through there um, is essentially that, those designs that I showed him on a piece of paper. So how did he find, uh, how did, where did he find you? Um, there was a university microprocessor society, Cambridge University Microprocessor Society, that I was a member of. and. People there knew me and knew that I knew about low power electronics. So when Herman approached them asking for somebody who knew about low power electronics, they referred to me. So, um, and then, then uh, the later things es escalated. What, what did Herman do later? What happened? Um, so in 1984, 5, 6, the home computer market was changing out of all recognition. First it boomed and then it bust. When it bust, Acorn needed extra funds and Olivetti decided that it would invest in Acorn and then invest in Acorn again and made Herman head of Olivetti's uh, advanced research. Um, so he left Acorn at that time. He got rather unenchanted with running Olivetti's research um, and left that and formed a new company, Active Book Company, to try and build um, a portable electronic machine based on arms. Um, but the Active Book wasn't very successful. 
and eventually Herman started to be heading towards becoming a, a venture capitalist, which is what he is now. So do you meet together uh, the, the early people that you, that you were in Acorn? You meet together once in a while? Once in long whiles, yes. And so, so the last time I saw Herman was the opening of the Science Museum's um, communications wing, yeah, which is back in November. All right, so this is cool. Uh, so I, I would like to say thanks a lot for designing uh, the, the architecture, the chips and everything. Um, well, you can thank me for the instruction set architecture of the original one, but there are a lot of other people who designed the chips and everything. So when, 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 the, when the architecture was licensed, all these other people joined and started making ARM processors, how many new things were added since then? Um, well, how to describe that? Um, like so, so lots of significant things happened before anything else. Um, so the, the instruction set grew a little bit. Um, that then uh, ARM was approached by Nokia. And Nokia sort of wanted to build a mobile phone around the processor. And Nokia was scared about the code density of the 32-bit design. So ARM built um, a new instruction decoder called Thumb on top of the machine. So Thumb instructions are only 16 bits inside, in size. Damn this cold. Um, and a, a, an ARM processor with the, the original Thumb system decodes Thumb instructions into ARM instructions and then executes them on an ARM data path. So this is Thumb 1. And with Thumb, um, ARM were able to convince Nokia that they'd have good enough code density. Um, and so they got into a Nokia mobile phone and then into Nokia system on chips and then become in deeply embedded in the mobile phone industry. Um, so that was a quite a significant addition to the instruction set. Um, then ARM added various SIMD enhancements. Um, we had a, the notion of coprocessors in the instruction set, um, which were originally used for floating point and other things. Um, but that did mean that the uh, floating point wasn't that good because the space in the instruction set for coprocessors wasn't very large. So ARM redesigned the floating point system to produce a thing called VFP. Um, so that's another major addition. And the, the very modernist ARMs that with the 64-bit instruction set are ground up redesign. So 64-bit is uh, uh, starting over a little bit. Yes. Uh, so Re-optimizing things. Everybody has a choice to make as they go from a 32-bit world to a 64-bit world. There will be massive amounts of pain. Um, Intel thought that they could convince people to completely jump from 32-bit x86 to the Itanium 64-bit design. Um, but AMD brought out a 64-bit extended version of x86, which is what dominates the market today. Um, Intel were forced to design one like AMD had done. Um, ARM decided to change its instruction set completely um, in a compatible way. So you can have a, a machine today which executes the old 32-bit instruction set and the new 64-bit one, but in the future you'd only build the 64-bit one.